All right, in this video, we're gonna look and see what is E, E also known as Euler's number, or Leonard Euler. So, um, before I jump into this, it should be kind of interesting to us that we understand probably very well what pi is. Pi is an irrational number. It helps us find um, the uh, area and circumference of a circle, and pi is just the circumference divided by the diameter of any given circle. No matter how large or small, the circumference around divided by the diameter gives me pi. But what is this e? So let's jump into that. Before I get straight to E, let's talk about compound interest, and this is how we're going to come up with E. So if you recall from your various math courses, compound interest, the formula is A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N to the N times T, where A is the ending value, P is the principal, the starting value. R is whatever rate we're dealing with as a decimal. N is the number of compoundings per time unit, and T is time. Now, if I consider an example to try to see what happens with one of these variables, let's consider the example where the principal amount is 1, the rate is 100%, which is 1, and we'll consider what happens after one time unit. Now notice I have not given us an n, so in here, this formula now reduces down to a equals 1 times 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power. And what happens is I can make a little table to see this. So for a given value of n, what happens to 1 plus 1 over n all to the nth power? And that should be a little bit interesting because as you can see, as I make n larger, so if I go from 1 to 2, this fraction here gets smaller, meaning this gets closer to 1, and 1 to any given power is 1. So this gets smaller, this gets larger, and what happens? And so you might wonder, okay, does the value of this end up getting bigger or getting or get smaller? And so if I were to substitute 1 into this, I'd have 1 plus 1 over 1, which is 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2, to the first is 2. And before I go on, let me actually put this into uh, a calculator so I can come up with many values quickly. So in here, I'm going to just type this in. Instead of having n, I'll put in x so I can construct a lot of values quickly. So 1 plus 1 over x to the x power. And I'm going to just turn on table set and turn this to ask so I can put in a lot of values and see what it gives me. So going to the table now, I have this empty table, and when I put in 1, it substitutes 1 in for both of these and gives me 2. When I put 2 in, well, this is going to be a half. So 1.5 squared, well, that's going to be 2.25. It got larger. Now you might be wondering, why does that happen? Um, so let me talk about that briefly before we finish off this table and see what happens as n gets larger and larger. So in here, this 2 means that we add 50% twice. So 1 means I add 100% once. 100% of 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. Some people, the first time they consider this, would say, well, isn't adding 50% twice the same as adding 100% once, so shouldn't these be the same? And the answer to that question is no, because this is compounded interest. So 
if I start at 1, 50% of 1 is 0.5, and I add that on, I get to 1.5. 50% of 1.5 is no longer 0.5, now it's 0.75, half of 1.5 is 0.75, and I add that on, and I get to 2.25. So what happens is you accrue, that might not be the right way to spell that, interest on your interest. Let me actually separate those words. So the more you compound, the more times you get interest on interest you've already earned, and so this number will get larger. And so let's consider what happens when we get to a reasonably larger number, 10, which means instead of doing 100% one time, I'm going to do 10% 10 times. And so if I put 10 in, I get 2.594-ish, 2.5937. Now, the next question that should come up is, well, if I keep on increasing n, and this keeps on getting larger, as this tends towards infinity, does this tend towards positive infinity as well? That's an interesting question. So let's see what happens. Well, as I go from 10 to 100, I'm getting to 2.7048. So it's still increasing. But, notice when I went from 1 to 2, I increased by 0.25. When I went from 10 to 100, I only increased, increased by like 0.11. So will it keep increasing unboundedly? Let's try a few more. What if I put in 1,000? That gives me 2.7169. What happens if I put in a million? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I get 2.7186. And no matter how much larger I make this, I'll get 2.7183 until I sort of break the calculator and go too far and it gets round off error. So if I put this with 2, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, that should break the calculator and this is a junk answer here, okay? The calculator has dealt with a number that's too small for it and it rounded off and got that. So ignore that case. That's the calculator being stupid. Um, but as long as I don't get to that point where I break the calculator, uh, I keep on getting 2.7183. So it does actually keep increasing, but it has this sort of bound. And this bound is not infinity. This bound that's approaching is the number we call e, which is approximately 2.71828. Um, it's an irrational number like pi and keeps going, never repeats. There is no sort of pattern to these numbers. Um, and so it's worth noting that if I were to sort of sketch this graph, this will always be increasing. However, it's never going to cross this line. That's a little bit odd. We'll talk about this idea um, more in another video when we start talking about um, asymptotes and start talking about uh, the infinite sums of series and how they can sometimes be finite. But basically, that's what E is. E is this limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over, or 1 plus 1 over n to the n power. Now, what happens if I try something a little bit different and put a 2 over n? Well, let me go back to the calculator and see what's happening. So, if I change this from 1 over n to 2 over n, not graph, but the table, I get this thing that seems to be approaching 7.389. Well, what is 7.389 other than e squared. 
7.389. Okay, and what if I had a 3 up here? Well, let's look and see what happens in the calculator there. Let's see if the trend continues. A 2 gives me e squared. Will a 3 give me e cubed? I sure hope so. That would be nice. So this is t tending towards 20.085, and e cubed is 20.085, actually 20.086 when that's rounded, so that's exactly equal to e cubed. And we have this thing, 1 plus r over n to the n is equal to e to the r. And I'm not going to get into this much, but this is why we have um, the continuous compounding formula, so continuously compounded would give me A equals P E to the R T, because as I compound any interest rate infinitely many times per time unit, I tend towards E to the R. One last thing to consider about this, which is kind of interesting, what if I wanted to construct E easily without having to do a bunch of um, this sort of 1 plus 1 over n to the n? I don't want to have to do an exponent with all this stuff, so there's an easier way to construct it. A nice little series. Series just a sum of infinitely many numbers. So E will actually end up equaling the sum as n, uh, let's use a different variable, let's use k goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over k factorial. And what this notation means is I'm going to add up all of the numbers um, from putting 0, putting 1, putting 2, putting 3, all the way up towards infinity. So it should equal 1 over 0 factorial plus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial, plus 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 4 factorial. And as I add these on, well, 0 factorial is 1, so this is going to be 1 over 1, which is 1, plus 1 factorial is 1, 1 over 1 is 1, 2 factorial is 2, so 1 over 2 is 0 0.5. Um, 3 factorial is 6, so 1 sixth is 0 0.16 repeating. And so far, so I'm going to stop it here. 4 factorial is 24. I don't want to have to deal with 1 over 24, but it does continue this way. And you can see, as I get the partial sums, let me change colors for this, 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 0.5 is 2.5, plus 0.1 6 repeating is 2.66 repeating. I guess I could put the 6 repeating there. And as I add these on more and more, eventually I will tend towards E. So it's a nice way to quickly get more and more decimals if, let's say, you didn't know the number or want to um, get to more decimal places than your calculator or whatever has. All right, I hope that was helpful. Uh, please feel free to comment below with any questions.